about you. I want to make you rich. You see the palm trees? They tell you anything's possible. No one cares about reality anymore. The thing about Terrence Malick is that I think that he's one of the few kind of visionary directors yeah. that are still around, that mm. are making movies actively. Mm -hmm. So we have a feature called Five Favorite Films oh, okay. on the site. Oh, and I was wondering if I could put you on the spot and ask you five films <laughs> that really made an impression on you visually like his films do. Touch of Evil. Ooh, yes. Mm. Oh, yes. Uh, Vertigo. Okay, love it. The Third Man. Yeah, okay, so you're uh, going old school. These have kind of a, a yeah. they're stylistically, they're similar. I'm getting it so I far. do love black and white. I do love the noirish feeling. I love the humor that is uh, sometimes lost on, it was lost on me for a long time. Right, in, yeah. In noir. Um, Demands a second viewing. Yes, uh, Place in the Sun. Oh, before, okay. Uh, and something newer. <laughs> would probably stay current with yeah, yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> I mean Fargo Fargo visually Fargo nice. was, uh, was very stunning yeah so let's go back through them while we still have this time and let's talk specifically about your choices and so like let's touch of evil is one that really stands out to me so tell yeah. me about that one so touch of evil actually more than visually touch of evil the sound um, um, was was striking to me I didn't know why I only learned later that um, um, that it was a, a watershed moment for sound in movies. I didn't know that. I just knew it was, a, it was, um, it was very moving huh. to me. I yeah. never thought about that before. I didn't either. I actually yeah. didn't know. Now I have to go yeah. back and rewatch it through that lens. Yeah, there was a. There, I, I don't know, know exactly that uh, technically what were the leaps, but there was something. Um, there, there was there was something big about that. But visually, also, uh, like I said, I love the noirish, black and white, moody. Uh, uh, there was less humor in that one, but there's something funny about watching. Uh, um, <clears throat> there's something funny about watching that film. I don't know what it is. Uh, uh, maybe it's the sort of unintentional racism. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, it's so different from how we are today. Yeah, and it's that's so much, probably it. It's yeah. not conscious about itself in the same way that we are now. Right. No. No. It's, but it's scary. It's a. It, it's a movie that made me feel nervous when I watched it. Still does. So I can see a parallel between several of the roles that you've played. <laughs> right. With those movies too. Sure. Yeah. Because here you are sitting in front of me, and you are a very pleasant gentleman. Oh. But damn, you must, you're great actors now. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm always like, that Wes Bentley, I don't know. Let's not put him in a top hat on American Horror Story anymore because right. I couldn't sleep. <laughs> Me either, by the way. So would yeah. you say that those movies informed your roles? Yeah, I think I was, you know, I've always been, I, I like complicated characters, meaning sometimes yeah. they come off as dark. Um, because I think people are complicated and always have a sort of dark side, of, if not darkish side. And... Um, and I like to play them because I, I don't like to judge people. And I, I think acting is the perfect form for that. You don't, because the first rule is to not judge your character. Sure, yeah. So that's a real challenge when you play uh, people who are unsavory. So that's, but that's, that is part of the appeal of some characters for me, yeah. And that's